What's up guys, it's Nick and welcome back to Freedom Algo. Today we're talking about the parabolic SAR indicator. So this indicator has been around for a long time. And what I can say is if you go into TradingView and you look at most of these indicators, and even if you read ones that are created by the, by the community, sometimes there'll be some explanation in here. But what you can do is typically ones like this, you can hit this question mark and it will give you a whole bunch of information about parabolic SAR or any of the other indicators. You can also run Google searches. So I'm not going to bore you with the whole history of it, where it all comes from, the entire calculation of it, because that's all already available for you. The main thing is how to use it for trading. So parabolic SAR is a stop and reverse indicator. So I already have it added to the charts, these blue dots. So when you add the parabolic SAR, to your chart, what it's gonna do is it's gonna try to track the price movement as basically a trend, and then it's gonna show what's called the stop and reverse, where once it shifts, so when you have it underneath here, so right here was an uptrend, so you can see parabolic SAR was underneath the prices. So when you have it underneath, that means that the price is moving up. When it goes over the top, it means that we might have a stop and reverse where the price is gonna go down. Now in this case, Sometimes it's going to give you a false signal, so it can't be used only on its own, but it can also give you some pretty good price action. So you can see here we were going up and then we were going down. We we're going up, down. So you could use it as a way to get into some of these trades with other confirmation indicators. But the main thing is you can also adjust these settings. So what it's going to do, it's going to have a start and an increment. Now this is going to affect the acceleration that it uses in the calculations. So if I change this to 0 0.04, you're going to find the parabolic SAR might be reacting a little bit differently. So you can see there it got a little tighter right there. It actually sh signaled down here, which was not the right move. So you can see it got, it got a little tighter because it accelerated it a little faster. Now if I do the opposite and I lower it here, it's going to make this a little bit, um, it's going to make this a little bit less reactive. So let's just see here. Did it? Why are you not updating for me, SAR? Come on. Come on. Well, it is totally stuck right now. So let's see if that will update. Give me just a second here. Why is this? There it goes. That was weird. So anyway, you can see here it became way less reactive. And this signal's got a little bit better. However, you get in later. So you can see that this signal right here, Just I'll just put a little line right there just so you can kind of remember where it was or this signal right here um, so it did help you with this whole uptrend however it the signals were a little bit slower so let's just take a look here so let's get rid of that don't need that so let's go back to our old default settings and you'll see where it moved you see this dot moved back two. this dot moved back several so just wanted to kind of show you how this worked. Now I'm on a five minute chart. So this can be pretty useful when you're looking at longer time frames too. So here's like an hourly chart, for example. It just helps you see the reversals in action and then chart it out that way. Um, now this is Euro USD. You might find that it works different on different uh, charts, but let's just take a look at a trend. So here's a nice trend. And you can use the SAR sometimes to help you with just kind of trailing your stop loss um you can kind of use it for that so in this case you would have rode this up and say your stop was here you might have gotten stopped out but that's okay you had another opportunity to get back in to the continuing move there's different ways that you can run this um, i find that it can be really useful when running this alongside other indicators to help you just have an extra confirmation of making sure you're on the right side of the trend it can work a little bit faster than a moving average a lot of the time uh, let's try this. Let's try changing this to a three. Let's go down to a one minute. Take a look. So if you're scalping the one minute, you might find this to be a little bit more useful. So you got the stop and reverse there. Maybe there's a short half getting ready. Get a short. You get a nice short there. Then you see it going here. Maybe you get a long scalp out on the wick. Then right here, you see it changing again. Maybe you get into a short around here. You could ride that down. So you can see that this actually can play really nicely with some of these. Now, these are obviously some pretty small moves. Uh, we can check, you know, let's say you're trading Bitcoin. Uh, here, let's just take a look. So if you're scalping Bitcoin on the one minute, I mean, some of these are some pretty decent moves. So if you got in with the SAR here, 
you get a a pretty decent uh, pretty decent reaction where you could ride that up on leverage. That's actually a pretty significant move right here. You could ride it down right here. Ride that bar up. You know you can. Oh wait, that one. Sorry, that one was uh, false. It wasn't on that bar. It was on this bar. So that actually wouldn't have worked on that one. Um, this one, perhaps you can see this is pretty tight here and it's not always going to get you into the best trade, but then of course here you get a nice move that's going down. So it really just depends on how you play it, but you can see that these can work really well. You can adjust the settings again. If we go back to the defaults, you know, it's going to be a little less reactive. Uh, sometimes if you want to go, I'm not sure if this one will let me go zero zero five, or if I have to use one of the custom ones for that. There you go. So you can, that I wouldn't trade with that, but you know, you get the idea. Try it out. See what you think. Uh, it really does compare well to indicators like Super Trend and Half Trend, which I have other videos on. If you want to check those out, but if I just plot this, I just want to actually show this real quick. So let's put a default Super Trend on here, and let's also put the Half Trend on here the uh the one by ever get will be fine i'm just gonna hide that so you can kind of see the similarities between the parabolic SAR and super trend for example now this super trend is default settings here let me change this to a uh, factor of two and then i'm gonna change the atr length to like a two let's try that so now you can see that this is almost identical i mean it's a little bit different you can see uh, in the case of Parabolic SAR, it came a little bit later than Super Trend on this particular move. Uh, on this move, it was on the same one. On this move down, it was a little bit earlier than Super Trend, based on these settings, of course. So you can see it's not exactly the same, but it, it follows the same sort of idea of how it's working, because they're both really stop and reverse um, indicators that are kind of showing the trend direction and then they're showing the stop and reverse. Now, if we add half trend, hide the super trend, it's going to be a little bit weird to see. What I'm actually going to do here is change the parabolic SAR color to just like yellow um, because the half trend has a bunch of dots, so it makes it really awkward. Uh, but if we go over here, you can kind of see what I mean. So half trend, you can see change to red and you get that signal right there on the same spot as the parabolic SAR. On this one, parabolic SAR was earlier, the half trend signal was here. Uh, you get the idea. You know, they, they can work very similar to one another. It's a personal preference thing, but I thought I should add in parabolic SAR because I think that the super trend, half trend, and parabolic SAR are the main stop and reverse indicators. And I typically have at least one of these on my chart when I'm trading. So check it out. Let me know what you think. And I'll talk to you soon.